Ah, none like good cup of coffee. All right, this is going to be our video on the angular motion. Ah, my pen. Angular motion 7.2 part 2 is where we're at. I just want to take one second and run back through every equation you need so far in chapter 7. If we go right back to the beginning, first equation is just theta equals s over r. And we don't really use this equation a lot, although I will go ahead and tell you, every now and then you can actually use this problem. And what you can actually do is this. You can actually try and find that S in a problem. And you can then use this S as an X in terms of like working X over T or your kinematics, your plain old... I can't spell, but anyway, x equals v o t. You can kind of use this sometimes for this purpose. Other than that, we don't use it a whole lot, so let's kind of move on. But I'm just letting you know, you can use this s and substitute it as an x sometimes. So this equation does come in handy. Do remember that your angles, all your thetas, your angular displacements, have to be in radians. Now, the meat of your chapter, though, are formulas that look like this. This is kind of like your x over t equation. w equals w o plus alpha t. I should really stop saying w because it's not a w. And then we've got theta equals omega o t plus one half alpha t square. And then we've got w square, omega square equals omega o square plus two alpha theta. And then we've got a couple of other equations, and that's V equals RW and A equals R alpha. And both of these are known as tangential equations. I'm going to take a second. If you don't know what the word tangential means, I'll take my cup of coffee and use it here for a second. Draw me a little circle using my coffee cup. Da, 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 da. Exciting, exciting, exciting. So if here is my coffee cup, and there's my little circle. If you're not familiar with what the word tangential means, draw, I'm still drawing my little circle. should have done all this before the video, but I will. Here's my little circle. If you were to take this velocity here, there, that velocity is tangential to the circle, which literally just means at this point, it's at a 90 degree angle. And if you keep following at this point, tangential again, if I drew a line here, the tangential velocity would again be at 90 degrees to the circle. So there would be your tangential velocity again there. So the word tangential velocity is just referring to plain old straight line velocity. You could call it either tangential. And in even some cases, for the sake of working problems, linear. But it just means we can use these equations to convert any of this things going in circles to a plain old V or a plain old A that we can then use in your normal kinematic equations. And that's the purpose of these two equations I kind of marked over down here. Well, all right, we've got our equations. Let's go right back to work doing two examples. Now I've only got two example problems to work. So let's go ahead and do these. All right, so let's see. And apparently, once again, I do not have enough information to even work this problem. All I've gotten is a time, and I'm pretty sure, so I'm going to go through it. I'm going to fix this up a little bit. Da, da, da. Let's see if I can improve my questions. I'm going to assume this problem started out like this. I think there was a disk in this problem, and so we've got a disk, 
And this disc is going to rotate. And it says that the point on this disc, and here we go, we're going to, we've got a rotating disc. I'm going to say that we've got a time of 0 0.330 seconds. It does give me that. I'm going to go ahead and do something. I'm going to make this little breakdown here. W O W. And then we've got time, and then alpha and theta would be the two other things we need. I'm going to say that we've got a problem, and something, let's go with, let's say it starts at rest. So let's say that this is zero rads per second. Pretty common. And then we're going to say that it has an acceleration of, I don't know, let's go with 5 radians per second square. All right, you've done problems like this before. And what did I always say? How many things did you need to know to work these problems? You needed three. Well, it's still true. All we need is three things. So look at what we've got. And I want you all to find everything else here. We've got a time. We've got an alpha. We've got this WO is zero. All I want to do is pick some of those rotational kinematic equations and find the unknowns. What would be the easiest way to find this velocity? Well, let's use the first rotational kinematic. Omega equals omega O plus alpha T. And now we can substitute in. Zero plus, we've got five for an acceleration times 0 0.330 for time. And now we can go back and solve. 5 ohm, 5 times 0 0.330, that's 1.65. So my velocity would be 1.65 rads per second. It also asked me to find theta. I'll kick the camera first, though. So how can I find theta? Well, I've already got an equation solved for theta. Theta is equal to W O omega O T plus 1 half. Alpha T square, mega O is zero, so I can just get rid of that. So it's just going to be one half of five times 0 0.330 square. So 0 0.5 times five times point, oops, 0 0.330 square, and I've got 0 0.27, 27, and my unit for theta is rads. And there is all I need on that one. So we've kind of got that knocked down. This problem did have one little B part up here. It said find the tangential speed. When you see the word tangential speed, all that means is find V. Find V. Well, if I know W, I can find V, because if I want to find a tangential speed, a plain old linear velocity, all I need is the equation R W, which means this problem should have also have given me a radius. Good grief, I can't do anything right. I keep These are new examples, and I didn't copy them correctly. Uh, let's say that we need a radius here. How big of a disk do we want? Uh, let's make it easy. Let's go five centimeters. Now, I could leave this in five centimeters, but my answer will be in centimeters per second, so I don't want to do that. Let's go with 0.5 meters times 1.65 radians per second. And so let's see if we can do the math on this. 0.05 times 1.65, 0 0.083, and the answer is meters per second. And I wrote out the units for a reason, because this is the beauty of radians. If you take a look, here's radian per second times meter. If you look, the radians don't cancel, yet the radians disappear. And that's the cool thing about the radians unit, is their ability to do just that. So anyway, we've worked that problem. Uh, let's do one more example problem using these rotational kinematics. Let's even cross our fingers and hope that the whole problem is there. 
kind of drives me cuckoo when we're missing half the information. Let's do one more. Uh, we've got a record playing at 33 and one third revolutions per minute at the following positions. How did I get so messed up on all these problems? Well, I'm missing like information on all of them. Um, all I've got here, let's see if we can figure this out. Calculate the linear speed. All right. So this problem is saying find that kind of speed, saying find V. It's not saying find angular speed. But the thing is, it gave us 33 and a third revolutions per minute at the following position. So, da, 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 following positions of the record. I can't figure out what I'm doing here, hardly. Oh, wait. We're good. This is a W. Look at what gave you. 33 and a third revolutions per minute. So this is 33.3 RPMs. This is, it's giving you an angular speed. So this problem, all it's wanting you to do is just use this V equals RW equation. That's it. So this is actually a very easy problem. The only thing it wants you to do is we cannot use RPM. What does our unit need to be in? Meters per second. So let's just go convert that. 33.3 revs per minute. You should be able to convert this and fast forward over this part. 6.28 rads per one rev. And then there are 60 seconds for every minute. At least I hope. And everything cancels. So 33.3 times 6.28 divided by 60, 3.49. Uh, this would be rads per second. So now I've got my speed in radians per second. And now all I gotta do is come back up here and do this problem twice. I'm going to do it once for one and a half centimeters, which would be 0 0.015 meters. Then the other time I'll do it for 0 0.051 meters. School bells, gotta love them. 3.49, 3.49 radians per second. So all we've got to do is multiply, and we've got both these answers at this time 0 0.015 times 3.49, 0 0.052 meters per second. Hey, and we've even got the right answer. And then 0 0.051 times 3.49. Now I've got 0.18. And their answer is 0.179. So we did pretty good on this one. All right. So this kind of concludes uh, unit 7.2. Our next thing will be on force and acceleration for things going in circles. But anyway, you've got a big start in the chapter right now. Thank you for watching.